Again, welcome to Statistics. This is Introduction to Statistics Thinking. And our unit one, lecture number two. So in this lecture, we're going to go through why we study statistics. We have three reasons here. And the main reason is that in today's society, everything we do in our daily life, we are going to generate data, especially the internet has provided us with so many ways that I mean, we can perform almost our daily life activities online, from shopping online, banking online, even working online. And anytime we are doing any tax or activities online, we are generating a digital data. So our today's society is more or less a data-driven society. And we need a statistics techniques so that we can be able to analyze this data. One reason also is that data storage facilities are very cheap. Hardware storage facilities, uh, right, they are very cheap. So companies are ready to store as much data as they can. So our goal now is to try to find some knowledge from this data or some patterns in this data. And this is where we need statistics uh, techniques. So numerical information is everywhere. And secondly, statistics techniques are used to make decisions that affect our daily life. The knowledge of statistical method will help you understand how decisions are made and also give you a better understanding of how they affect you. So no matter what line of work you select, you will find yourself faced with decisions where an understanding of data analysis is very important and also very helpful. So we start with the, our definitions. First is population. So a population is the total set of subjects or things we are interested in studying. So an example is if I'm interested in studying adults between the age of 19 to 30 in New York City, then my total population will be all the adults between that age in New York City. So a population, again, is the total set of subjects. It can be any entities, either a person, and, and items, inventory, etc. So it's a total set of subjects or things we are interested in studying. Then we have the frame. A frame is a list containing all members of the population. So again, the frame is a list containing all members of the population. Then a census, the strict definition of a census is a survey that includes all elements or units in the frame. Then we have population parameters. So population parameters will be the characteristics of the population. So this will be the facts about the population. Since parameters are description of the population, a population can have many parameters. So a parameters is more or less a characteristics of a population. So an example would be we have a population that their age or their weight or their names, location, etc. These are all parameters of the population. So we move to sample. A sample will be the subset of a population, which is used to gain insight about a, the population. So samples are used to represent larger group. And this is the part of statistics we are going to study about. Descriptive statistics is to summarize the data, is to understand the data. Inferential statistics is using a sample to test um, use the statistics techniques to test it, and the decision you get, you apply it to the population. So normally when we are doing any studies, most likely we are not going to use the whole population. The reason is that population is very large, so it consumes a lot of time, and also it takes a lot of money to be able to collect data of all population in a specific geographical area. So most likely we are going to use a sample to test our hypothesis, then the decision we get, 
we apply it to the whole population. So that's why here we say a sample is a subset of population which is used to gain insight about the population. It's a subset part of the population and it's used to gain insight about the population. So samples are normally used to represent, again, larger group such as the population. And this is the concept of inferential statistics. So a statistic is a fact or characteristics about a sample. So we know the characteristics of a population, we call it parameter. The characteristics of a sample is called statistic. So we have a population. Population is described by the parameters. And a sample, again, which is part of the population, is described by the statistics. So what a parameter and statistics here we say, again, a parameter is the number that describes the population characteristics. Example would be the average age of all people in the US. Here is a parameter because we are talking about everybody in the in, in US. Whereas a statistics is a number that describes a sample characteristics. Example also will be the average age of people from a sample of three states. So first parameter, the whole population, average age of all the people in the United States. I'll take a sample of the United States have 51 states. I'll take uh, only three states out of the whole states in New York, I mean, in United States. And again, I mean, that will be called a sample. So example is we should distinguish between parameter and statistics. Now we have a recent survey of a sample of MBAs reported that average salary for an MBA is more than 82,000. The question is a recent survey of a sample. So this is a sample, so that would be statistics. So sample statistics, the average of 82,000 is based on a subset of the population. The question is said a recent survey of a sample. So that is the characteristics statistics. Now, a starting salary of for 667 MBA graduates from University of Chicago Graduate School of Business increased 8.5% from the previous year. Now, here we say the starting salaries for the 667 MBA graduates. So, this will be all the MBA graduates, 667. So, that will be the population parameter, the percent increase of 8.5% is based on all the 667 graduate starting salary. So one thing also we should focus on statistics. So almost in every professional field, ethics is very important. So in statistics, the same thing. Now here we say that the practice of statistics should be based on integrity and honesty. First, when you are collecting the data, Secondly, when you analyze the data. And thirdly, when you report your results and conclusions based on the data. So in statistics, these are the three steps. First, we need to prepare a tool that we can use to collect the data. We make sure that there is no bias on these tools. And we try to eliminate bias as much as possible. In the future, we're going to discuss about the concept of like co-founding variable, which also need to be eliminated. Modification effects. These are all some of the issues that can affect our results of the research work. So collecting your data, make sure you have the correct tools and also the measurements are very accurate. If then analyzing, we make sure we use the correct techniques also then we'll report our results and conclusion based on the data. So this will be the conclusion of our second lectures in statistics. Again, these lectures we discuss about three major things. What is a statistics? Why do we study statistics? And some few terminology for what is population, what is a sample, what is a frame, what is a census. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you for your time.